Not a single person has tape. You have an atomic bomb in your bag. If anybody's going to have tape, it's you. I have to do everything. You are wasting a lot of time. <laughs> Welcome to your weekly ticket. Gerard Butler has signed on to reprise his role as Mike Banning in Night Has Fallen, the fourth installment in the Has Fallen action film franchise. Butler will team up once again with Rick Roman Waugh, who will serve as director on the film. Robert Mark Kamen, who worked on Angel Has Fallen, will return to write the screenplay. It is currently unconfirmed if Morgan Freeman, who starred as President Trumbull in the first three films, will return for the fourth installment. Denai Guerrero will star as trailblazing politician Shirley Chisholm in an upcoming film. The film titled Fighting Shirley Chisholm will portray the titular figure during her 1972 presidential run as the first black woman of a major political party to run for president of the United States. While Guerrero will play Chisholm, the movie is not a biopic and instead will focus more on the campaign and how the Chisholm Trail was populated by young people who sought social and political change during one of the most turbulent times in American history. And Chris Pratt will play Star-Lord in Thor, Love and Thunder. Pratt will reprise his Guardians of the Galaxy role in Taika Waititi's upcoming MCU film. He joins a star-studded cast, which includes Chris Hemsworth as Thor, and Natalie Portman, who is returning to her role as Jane Foster. They will also be joined by Tessa Thompson and Christian Bale. The film is scheduled to kick off shooting in Australia this coming January. In honor of the New Mutants being available to watch at home, we're taking a look at some of the best X-Men films and the future of the franchise under Disney's stewardship with Marvel Studios. All right, today we have none other than comic book writer, creator of characters like Deadpool, Cable, Youngblood, and so many more, Rob Liefeld, here to help us out. Hey, Rob, how's it going? Hey, it's going great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Look, so I'm going to start you off with a big question. Yes. What is the best X-Men film ever made? So I was doing this and separating them. And, and for me, X-Men 2, Days of Future Past, Logan, and First Class are, to me, the best of the crop. Like, those are really good movies. I know that over time, it's just been groupthink, or what I've encountered as groupthink, to just think all the Fox movies were no damn good. And that's just no damn true. There are some serious high highs I believe achieved in those movies. I, I gotta go with my gut. I still believe Days of Future Past edges out the rest. There was a period I really thought First Class had the most style and did more with less, but I think those are all upper crust, best of movies. You know, Days of Future Past is my favorite comic book story. It's well chronicled in my career. That is my default. I own pages from that original art from that story and comics. And I thought they did a great job with the film. I thought it looked good. It had a great story. It had a great through line, great performances. It was really cool the way they pulled off merging the two casts. So that's my favorite. Days of Future Past and then X-Men 2, because X-Men 2 is what X-Men 1 would have been like had they believed in it and given it the budget. It scaled up and it looked phenomenal. And let's not kid ourselves. How these movies look and move and feel is always important. So well, you take something like Days of Future Past and it it do, it borrows a lot from from the comic, but it isn't like identical. Do you think no. that's in, that's important? What do you think is the perfect balance? So that's a great question. You know, so I'm in all these nerdy Facebook original art Bronze Age era because that's my childhood. Okay, well, I was 13 when I grabbed Days of Future Past off the newsstand and turn the corner at my market, and there's Wolverine, older, protecting Kitty Pride. The X Men are dead. Okay, so as I was flipping through it the other day, I realized they made the right call. The, the, the beauty of the original story is we as the reader in real time had only been introduced to Kitty Pride for three issues. And then suddenly she's coming back. As, she's a 40 year old lady or older as we open. It's way in the, in the future. And then she sent back to warn the present day. Well, the studio made the right call, shifting the entire movie around Hugh Jackman it works better if Wolverine is the consciousness that travels back to warn us because we have no investment as a paying audience in Kitty Pride, She was never developed as well anywhere near on, on screen. So, I mean, that is the giant perspective shift of the film is that it takes place from Logan's point of view. But yeah, yeah I think Days of Future Past was a great um, merge of the two sensibilities, the younger past cast and then the, you know, existing and Hugh Jackman holds it all together as he should. 
making something with the X-Men, you can really go any direction. You can do the comics, you can follow one singular character. There's so many different ways that you can apply the X-Men. So the MCU is about to have to pick up that ball. And I'm sure right. a lot of us have our own theories of how we think that should happen. What do you think? You know, the fun part about being old Rob Liefeld is that I have teenage kids. My one son really only ever got into comics on a limited basis and, and they were DC comics. Um, he really got into Green Lantern and, and but, but he never kind of transferred his love of, he, he didn't love comics like his dad did and obviously my daughter doesn't and my younger son didn't. So they absorbed this stuff just on the film and the TV level. Into the Spider-Verse c- comes out and that's their first ever introduction to anything multiverse related. And they accepted it like it was ice cream. It was so easy to go down. The idea of different iterations of all these characters, you know, coming together. And to me, that's what kicked open the door for what we're seeing now as DC prepares the Flash movie, right? And let's not kid ourselves. These companies watch each other. What works in one is immediately implemented by the other. Everyone watches each other. I believe because Spider-Verse worked, DC's like, we're the kings of the multiverse. Let's do this in in our new Flash movie and and we'll have Michael Keaton and and we'll bring what happened to Spider-Verse to life with actors, you know, and and callbacks. And it's exciting to watch that stuff. So as we look at what WandaVision, which I'm reading all about this morning, and then we know Doctor Strange is coming. And then we go back to, I think it's Endgame, where the Ancient One breaks down how the multiverse strands work. I got to be honest, we're going to look back at that. I'm going to call it the lesson plan that the Ancient One gave an audience of 100 million people as the primer for everything going forward. When it comes to Deadpool and that franchise, the tag on Deadpool 2, when he had, I mean, first of all, you've got a time traveler. Roland Cable is a time traveler. I'm there to save the kid. Okay. (laughs) You know, and Deadpool takes his dial at the end, right? And mm-hmm. so, yep. and plays with it and ends the Green Lantern franchise in the <laughs> Deadpool movie, right? What do you want to see? You've got ideas. I just can't wait to see him interact with the X-Men and break. I can't wait to see the first time he breaks the fourth wall in front of right. other people or produces something out of nowhere or anything like that. In a lot of ways, you know, like we consume all of these comic book movies it's so good to see him go in there and and play around with that formula. Um, uh, and and yes. you're right, like Ryan is, is he's just fun to watch. So and, and I never know what to expect, and I love that. Like with other comic book movies, you can go and you can kind of get an idea for where the story is yeah. going. But with Deadpool, you, you know, sometimes you just don't even know. You know, would would I love to see a scene where Deadpool is meeting with Hemsworth as Thor and Rocket Raccoon, and then he pauses and turns to us in the audience and starts talking to us? breaking the fourth wall, and Thor goes, who are you talking to, mate? (laughs) Who's there? Well, like you said, that will be the ultimate culmination I mean, people will explode. I just can't wait. And I really appreciate you giving us some uh, some insights, some background, what, what you would like to see. Uh, so thank you, Rob Liefeld, for coming on the show. Yes, really let's go it. multiverse. Let's go multiverse option. Let's All right. go multiverse. Hey, hey, thank you for so much for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. Great seeing you. Available to watch in theaters is Fat Man. You just lost a big gun! What's the job? I'd like you to kill Santa Claus. To save his declining business, Chris Kringle, also known as Santa Claus, is forced into a partnership with the U.S. military. Making matters worse, Chris gets locked into a deadly battle of wits with a highly skilled assassin hired by a 12-year-old after receiving a lump of coal in his stocking. Tis the season for Fat Man to get even. And available to watch at home is Dreamland. The thief and murderer, Allison Wells send five human souls to heaven. If you see this woman, do not confront her. Margot Robbie stars in this love story set amidst America's struggle during the Great Depression. Eugene Evans, played by Finn Cole, dreams of escaping his small Texas town when he discovers a wounded fugitive bank robber hiding closer than he could ever imagine. Torn between claiming the bounty for her capture and his growing attraction to the criminal, nothing is as it seems, and Eugene must make a decision that will forever affect the lives of everyone he's ever loved. All right, well, that's it for today, but leave us a comment and let us know what is your favorite X-Men film of all time. I'm Kale, and I'll see you next time.